Hey guys, how's your Shield K9? And man, I just got off a phone call that, that they got me a little bit fired up. So I'm gonna vlog um, about this. So uh, I got a call from an individual who had a uh, dog that is court ordered to do some training because I guess the dog chewed up another dog or chewed up a person. I, I can't really, I, I couldn't really get that get that part out of her super clear. But regardless, uh, so she's court ordered to do obedience training with the dog to get it more under control. Then I said, no problem. We can help you up with that. We, we, we can, you know, we, we have a lot of experience with those kinds of dogs and, and, and we'll get you situated. Then she tells me, um, no, I don't want to do any e-collar training. I want real dog training. <laughs> so I was like, oh, okay. Uh, and she's like, yeah, I was told this by the professionals at the Humane Society. Well, I have a couple problems with that statement. Number one, I said, yeah, well, I only do e-collar training. I guess I don't do any real dog training here. You know, we're only one of the best dog trainers in Canada, but we don't really do real dog training. Um, so I have two problems with the that statement. Number one, the professionals at the Humane Society. That's my first problem. There are no professionals at the Humane Society. There are people there that take care of dogs. I'm sure they are very nice people that maybe care care about the dogs and they want you know what's best for their dogs. But unfortunately, they are not professionals in terms of training. I don't care how many little letters they put after their name or you know even if they went to a university because you don't learn to train dogs from books. You don't learn to train dogs from university and you sure as hell don't learn to train dogs from the Humane Society. If you did, I would have a lot less dogs that come from the Humane Society and, and there isn't one specific one that I get dogs from all sorts of rescues and humane societies all the time because they really don't know how to train dogs. They know how to give dogs treats and you know some of them can train dogs to do tricks but they sure as hell can't actually fix any behavioral problems. And that is because they don't really understand how dogs think and they are wedded to the utopian ideology of positive only dog training because surely that would be the only way to help a dog that is anxious. She told me, I want the real dog training. I don't want that e-collar training. I said, well, unfortunately I only train with the e-collar. So um, she's like, well, I was told it will make them make him worse. He's anxious. So, well, that's funny. You know, we train anxious dogs here, fearful dogs here, uh, aggressive dogs here, and normal, just happy-go-lucky dogs here. And I train them all with the e-collar. And that is because the e-collar is the most powerful tool in dog training. Not powerful in terms of big, big electricity. Powerful in terms of what you can do with it, the scope that that tool allows. And more importantly, what it allows you as the owner to do with your dog moving forward. If you have a dog that has been properly trained on the e-collar, it really opens up the possibilities for you. Whether it's having your dog off leash, uh, having your aggressive dog not be aggressive, having your, you know, your dog in a different state of mind, a dog that is reliable, compliant, obedient, happy, and healthy. That's what it opens up to you. Now, don't get me wrong. I can train that dog without an e-collar. I can train most any dog without an e-collar. Um, the e-collar isn't necessary. What the e-collar does is it expedites things because it's a very clear communicator with the dog. So it expedites the process. It removes about three quarters of the time necessary to train the dog. And number two, it ensures that you, as the owner, can duplicate to some degree what it is that I, as a trainer, can do. If I'm not training with an e-collar, it becomes a relatively physical process, okay? So a lot of my clients are not very physically inclined, you know, whether they're very small in stature compared to their dog, whether they have an injury, whether they had a stroke, uh, whether they're elderly. We have a lot of clients that are not, you know, they're not, they're not physical specimens for whatever reason, and it's nothing wrong with that. You shouldn't need to be in order to control a large dog or in order to have a behavioral problem under control, right? So the e-collar gives me the ability to give you the ability to duplicate what it is that I do, okay? And not only that, it expedites the process, which makes things cheaper for you. Most people couldn't afford me if I wasn't training with an e-collar. And quite frankly, in the end of the day, the result isn't gonna be quite the same. I don't care what you do, I know the old school methods with the lines and the pinch collars and the, the throw chains and all that kind of stuff. It doesn't 
result in the same level of reliability as it does with the e-collar. That's why you have police using the e-collar. That's why you have military using the e-collar. That's why you have hunters, okay, using the e-collar. The people that actually need the dogs to work and some of them who need the dogs to work reliably away from them off the leash use e-collars because it's the only 100% sure method to ensure, you know, that your dog is going to be reliable. Now, here's the other thing that she said. I want real training, not e-collar training. I challenge anybody that believes that. Slap an e-collar on your dog and start pushing buttons and see if your dog magically learns stuff. See if your dog that's aggressive, if you put that e-collar on him, stops being aggressive. Idiots say that. Idiots that don't know what they're talking about. You know, it's kind of like saying to, 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 a, to a craftsman that's coming to build you a house, I don't want you to use a power saw. I want you to build for real with a handsaw and, and, and wooden nails and a mallet, you know, instead of, instead of a, a nail gun and a power saw. It's like, listen, guys, we're in the 21st century here. Technology has given us the ability to expedite a lot of processes, and that includes dog training. Now, there's a hundred different types of e-collar training, okay? There's no one way to train with the e-collar. There's a hundred, probably 200 different ways to train with an e-collar. Okay, I'm familiar with a fair few of them and probably there's a fair few of them that I'm not familiar with. But that being said, the average idiot off the street that buys an e-collar is not going to be able to duplicate what it is that we do with the e-collar, which is why we have the reputation that we have and we have the amount of happy customers that we have. Okay, because you cannot duplicate that. The e-collar doesn't train your dog. The training trains your dog. All right, I can't stress that enough. There's there's so many idiots that believe this. And it bothers me because it's it, it really, number one, it devalues what it is that we do. And listen, we didn't build the reputation of being one of the best dog trainers in Canada, you know, for, for behavioral issues and, and for reliable functional obedience without knowing what it is that we're doing, okay? We have a lot of people that are happy with what we do. And that is because we offer them a quality product. And definitely nothing that the professionals of the Humane Society can duplicate. I think they're getting a little upset. We're cutting their grass, right? You know, they're seeing more and more of our dogs because we've been in the area now for years. They're, they must be seeing more and more of our dogs, you know, and, and it fundamentally bothers these people because in their heart, they truly believe, no, this doesn't work, it can't work. And then they see our dogs walking off the leash next to their owners, calm and compliant. They see the aggressive dogs that the vets are now referring to us whenever they have aggressive dog clients because they know we're the only people around that fix that kind of stuff, right? We're the only people around that have the guts to, to, to deal with those types of problems. And it's not because we're super brave, it's because we know what we're doing. And the professionals at the main Society and their buddies don't, okay? So this was an unprofessional rant. But sometimes I get to do that, you know? Sometimes I, I get to do that. And it, I'm a little bit, you know, it would be one thing, I guess, if they were really good at what they did. If they were really good, if they were like, you know what, we are really good at fixing aggressive dogs. That, that those, those guys at Shield K9 don't know what the hell they're doing. We, we have a lot of evidence of our success. It would be one thing, but they can't even train a dog to come reliably. They can't even train a dog not to pull the owner on the leash. Forget fixing a behavioral problem like dog aggression. They don't know what the hell they're talking about. They have no business giving people advice. Anyways, you know, I, I told her, hey, listen, uh, in a couple of weeks when it doesn't work out, whatever it is, tree training that you're going to do, feel free to give us a call. We'll help you out. And uh, that stands for anybody. You know, I always encourage people, you know, go find it. Go, go do the other thing. And when it doesn't work, feel free to call me. I will never say no to that. If you're like, I don't want to train with the e-collar. Um, I'm going to do positive reinforcement training or, or, or alpha rolling or whatever it is I want to, you want to do. Go do that. Go. And then if you do not like the results, feel free to come to us. But we have a standard here at Shield K9, and that standard is success. And that's why we have the, the results that we have and the happy customers that we have. Anyways, end of rant, guys. Have a nice day.